Hey everybody, I know there are a lot of people who drive down the road and they see poles like that and everybody generally refers to those as telephone poles. Well some, are, well, some of them are telephone poles and some of them aren't. And if you've ever wondered if they're different or why they use them, well we're going to get into that in this video. I recently had a subscriber who uh, asked me if our open line if our pole line was still in service, and if so, what it was used for. Our pole line is no longer in service. I'm going to get into what different poles are used for. I'll go over uh, what some of our stuff was for. All right, let's uh, get into it. And this is a telephone pole. Like I said, most people just think of all of these as telephone poles, but this one is actually a telephone pole because those are telephone cables. Most telephone cabling these days that needs to be done is done underground. Uh, it's a lot less susceptible to damage. Uh, today cables don't generally need to be as large as these with as many conductors. But anyway, you see the conduit on that pole and it goes across the street to a power pole. And the reason those are called power poles is that those are power lines that carry the electricity that makes your house run. And uh, this is a Southern California Edison system, the uh, SCE plant, or the SCE substation is right down there. And most power distribution lines, such as this one, I don't know what the voltage of this one is, probably 12 kV or something like that. Most of these are still done above ground because if there is a problem with it, it is a lot easier to fix it on open wire like this rather than try to figure out where the problem underground is and dig it up and fix it that way. But uh, you'll notice that uh, your house and most modern neighborhoods, all that stuff's underground because don't generally have problems. That's a much lower voltage. Just step down by that transformer up there. But anyway, power pole, telephone pole. One of the uh, functions that I forgot to mention about poles, this particular one is a power pole. Probably TV. And one of them that I forgot to mention is that they also use these for cable TV. Cable services still a lot of them still run above ground like this most of the ones that have been installed in the last most of the systems that have been installed in the last 25 years or so are underground when they're in the residential areas anyway i just wanted to pop that in there too or i forgot about it okay we have come up to east marcel or just marcel now that there's no longer a West Marcel. This is all just double track. But anyway, not here to talk about the tracks. We're here to talk about the pole line. And uh, this pole line over here that you see is the former signal line. This is uh, These are the poles that carried our signal circuits and the uh, AC power that we used uh, to power our cases and cabins with. Uh, usually uh, 120 volt AC and in some cases 240 and in rare cases more than that we had a 600 volt segment uh, down by uh, between Waylong and Cliff and then we had uh, I can't even remember it was a lot higher voltage 25 2400 something like that down around Calini and Billville at one time I think that's all still there but it's all underground now but anyway the uh, signal circuits that ran on this pole line uh, you had, uh, say, a signal there, and then down that way you'll have another signal. These open wires here, which are kind of hard to see because I'm just level with them, the, one, the wires that are on the cross arms, the cross arms, the, just as it says, the piece that crosses at the top, you'd have wires on there that uh, operated the... Uh, what were called H circuits or home circuits. They were for the home signals. I don't need to get into all that. 
uh, a lot of minutia involved in that. But uh, they carried information from one signal to the next. Uh, information always went towards the train that was coming to give it information about what was ahead of it. And that is what those lines were used for. Uh, they were used, there, there were a couple of other things that were on them. Um, we had code line, which was two wires that operated the signal system. They were the ones that when the dispatcher wanted something to throw a switch or to clear a signal, those were the wires, the remote control wires, and they would, the information would go down the code line, and each location had a different code number, still do, it just works differently now, but each location had a code number, and when that information got to that location with that code number, uh, whatever the dispatcher was asking that location to do, that would initiate that process. You can see that there is a cable hanging down underneath the uh, open line wire. Uh, after a time and where it was feasible, we got rid of the open line wire and put those circuits in cable like that. Uh, there are places like this where they had both and that one cable would eliminate a couple of cross arms a lot would eliminate a lot of open wire up the valley we eliminated all of them we didn't have any any signal circuitry on open line wire up there only only ac and code line but uh the cable was uh, a lot less susceptible to weather damage open line wire would be a problem you'd have high winds or for whatever somebody back into a pole or something in the line wires would get wrapped around each other and cause problems and uh, it could be a real pain to find and fix and uh, they're a lot more susceptible to damage to being broken uh, so it was a good thing to put it in cable and now all of that circuitry that used to run on that cable and that line wire is in the tracks it runs on the rails uh, those line wires ran electromagnetic relays. Uh, I did a piece on how the signal system works. I'll link that in here. Talks a little bit more about that. And uh, with the rails, we use, uh, it's all digital electronic uh, uh, microprocessor circuitry. And uh, it runs on a, uh, Time pulses on the rails, and I'm not going to get into the minutiae of that either. But uh, anyway, now here, you see that pole there and that there, these were the railroad communication poles. And uh, the reason that they didn't run them on the same pole line that they did the signal circuits is because at one time, Western Union, the telegraph company, had their circuits on this pole and they didn't want their circuitry affected by ours. Uh, and that was totally understandable. And then uh, the communications department, the railroad communications, we had our own telephone system out here. Very primitive and rudimentary two wire system. They, they were the dispatcher's phones. And at the control points, such as right there at Marcel, they would have either inside the house or in a little hut next to it, a, a phone that you picked up. And when you picked it up, it opened a line to uh, the dispatcher, uh, train crew could uh, get information they needed or permission they needed from a dispatcher to uh, do whatever. Same with us. We could call the dispatcher and get our track and time and other information from the dispatcher on those phones. Uh, that all went away quite some time ago. Um, and these lines have been gone for, uh, gosh, I don't know how long, a long time, 20 years, 30 years maybe. I don't, I don't even know. I don't even remember, to be honest with you. But anyway, that is what these two sets of poles were along the railroad. All right, moving on. I wanted to stop here. Um, this is... 
just a little further up from Marcel. And you can see here where the we have open line on the both on both the top and bottom cross arm. We're in the last place I was. You had some open wires on the top cross arm and a cable underneath. And uh, obviously there's no cable here. And uh, this was called a location pole. There used to be an intermediate signal right here uh, when they upgraded the signal system to, work, to its current state. They got rid of that signal, respaced everything. And uh, that box at the top of the pole there, that silver box, is called a bird box. And you had uh, wires that were tied to the line wire and they went down into that bird box and connected to a cable that went into the case that ran that intermediate signal. And uh, on the uh, wires there, you can see those metal bracket looking things with insulators on each end of them. Those are called McKean's and those dead-ended circuits. And you would have a circuit, if it didn't need to stop here, it would go on through on, a, on its line. It wouldn't have a McKean, it would just be tied to an insulator. But if it came through here, it would uh, be tied off at one end of the McKean and go into the bird box and into the case and then come back out on the other end of the McKean and continue on which way ever whichever way it was going. So, a little explanation of what a location pole was and if you want any idea of how extensive the communication and Western Union poles were at one time, that big H fixture up there was part of our communication pole line. So, they were both important to the railroad and now, neither one of them are in service. Well, I hope that answers anyone's questions about uh, the pole line, what it was used for, and uh, why we don't use it anymore. And uh, as usual, if you have any ideas like that, any more ideas, uh, shoot me an email, see what I can do about it. And remember to like, share, subscribe, and if you like what you see, click on the bell to be notified of future content. All right, we'll see y'all later.